Yo, 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 what's good, y'all? It's your boy, Fro in the building. And I want to say Happy New Year to everybody tuning in. And thank you to everybody a part of the Fro audience. But today, I'm going to be talking about the movies and the stuff I watched in December 2022. So ain't nothing to it, but to do it. First up, we got Violent Night. Saw this one in the theaters with Mama. Both had a great time. Both laughed throughout the movie. David Harbour does a pretty good job playing a likable Santa. He has his problems like being a drunk and losing a bit of the Christmas faith in the movie, but I really enjoyed his performance. Surprisingly heartfelt at times. I was expecting a straight up action, goofy, silly comedy, but I got a tad bit more. If you want more thoughts, check out my review on my channel. Yes. Next up, we got Christmas Bloody Christmas, and I wasn't a fan. This seemed like a movie that I would love. It's gory, it's bloody, has a grindhouse kind of feel to it. But the first 35 or so minutes are very, very hard for me to sit through. Extremely unlikable characters. The dialogue is very frustrating. But long story short, not my cup of tea. Wasn't feeling this one. If you want more thoughts, review on my channel. The 1973 flick, Deathline a.k.a. Raw Meat and Other Prints. This one I did enjoy. It is a slow burn. If you're looking for something very fast-paced for a one hour and 28 minute runtime, you might be disappointed because I will admit this one is a chore watch, but I enjoyed it for the very moody atmosphere, an awesome performance by Donald Pleasance. He's hands down the best thing about this movie. But like I said, this one was slow. Next up, we got The Menu. This was another great theater experience that I had. And this was another one that my mama and I enjoyed. I was going into this film expecting more of a dark, grim comedy. And for the most part, it did deliver that. Great performances. I don't think there's one bad performance in this whole movie. Ralph Fiennes is very great at being a creepy guy. Anya Taylor does a pretty good job. The Nicholas Holt guy did a good job at playing the coward. But I gotta say, I thought Hong Chow stole the whole show as the creepy servant to Ralph Fiennes, helping him kind of organize the dinner event. She was my favorite performance. I'm gonna save further thoughts for a review, but I really enjoyed this one. I had a great time. Del Toro's Pinocchio. This was one of my top favorite movies of this year, out of the movies I saw this year. I loved, loved, loved this movie way more than I thought I was going to. After the first 10 minutes, I knew I was in for a treat, but I also knew how dark this fucking movie was going to be. I thought this was a pretty heavy watch. Loved the ending, but thought it was very bittersweet at the same time. But to me, perfect ending. This is another one that I want to save for a further review. A Christmas Story. First time that I ever watched this movie, front to back. This one was always in the background, but I never paid full attention to it. There's things that I really do like about the movie, but for the most part, in my personal opinion, I think this movie's pretty overrated. I like Peter Billingsley as Ralphie. I think he does a good job, especially as a child actor. But the character himself was pretty mixed and down the line for me in my viewing. There's a couple times through the movie where he just leaves his friend behind to either get hurt or harmed. But I will admit that there was one thing that I could connect with with this character, and that was BB guns, especially at that age. I was a big fan of them. But I would just describe A Christmas Story for me as very mixed. The last movie I saw in December was National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. This was another one that I saw for the first time front to back, but I 100% love this movie. Christmas Vacation is fucking awesome front to back. Chevy Chase is hilarious. He does a great job playing Clark. Really like the character. He's a bumbling, happy-go-lucky, if you will, kind of guy, but he's a sincere family man, and he tries his hardest. That was the one thing that I really loved about the Clark character, especially in this one. Always loved Beverly D'Angelo, so thought she was great here, but I do think Randy Quaid steals the show as Cousin Eddie. Kills it, does a great job, funny as fuck. As soon as he pops up on screen, the movie just gets a tad bit better. Love this fucking movie. I had a blast. 
And I'm also going to review this one sometime down the line. When I have off time and I have time to kill and I'm surfing on YouTube, more than likely I'm watching the fucking Scribble Jam rap battles that I mentioned last month. They just crack me up. I'll wake up randomly sometimes with one of their punchlines in my head that was just fucking hilarious. There's this thing on YouTube called Actors on Actors. They'll get two random actors to interview each other or they'll get a group of them to interview each other. And I watched Adam Sandler interview Brendan Fraser pretty recently. And I thought it was a pretty cool watch. I'm a fan of both. So if you're a fan of them, check it out. I forgot to include this one through the months, but I'm a regular watcher of the So What's Up web series by DJ Premier, or who I call Primo. It's probably my favorite web series right now. It's awesome, great knowledge. If you're a beat maker or you want to be a producer, great fucking channel to watch. He talks about all the classics and the hits that he has through his floppy disk library. I'm a regular watcher. Love that series. Shout out to Primo. And that's what I watched in December 2022. Thank y'all very much. And one more time, Happy New Year to you and yours. Fro.